We already talked about uh, web division yesterday, and now we're going to expand a bit on that. So this will again be a small live coding session. Um, what we're going to do is uh, change the kernel a bit to print out different thread indices. So that's what I'm going to do now. I've already cloned the example repositories yesterday. So uh, please do this first because there are many more examples that I pushed there today. There you go. But before we delve into the new examples, we're going to uh, open the example from yesterday that we copied in, uh, to our to a location somewhere in our file system. And we're going to change the source code again. So in the lines uh, 35 and following, we have uh, the grid thread index, meaning the uh, index of the thread on the grid. And we're going to change this to the um, index of the block on the grid. So we are going to rename this to grid block index. Going to change this from threads to blocks. Block index. And we're not a thread anymore, we're now a block. To save this, heading back to our build directory. Now, before I rebuild this executable, I'll first execute the old version with the threads. Now I'm going to build this. There we go. And now we see that nothing uh, has really changed except that we now print out the block instead of the thread. This is because yesterday uh, we just changed the number of blocks actually and not the number of threads in a block. On a CPU, there's always uh, one thread in a block and to, in order to increase the threads, we just increase the number of blocks in Alpaca. Uh, this is different if you would execute this on a GPU, for example, there you can have multiple threads inside a block. Now, heading back to the slides. This will be become much clearer if we add back in the uh, threads again. And now we're going to uh, print the thread index inside the block. So we're going back to the source, opening this again, and we're going to add a few lines. Block thread index basically works just the same like the above. And we're going to print the whole thing. Going to comment this one out. Heading back to build. Oh no. Ah, title. have done this one. Okay. Let's 
with this. Now we can see that all the threads have the block local index zero and uh, individual block numbers. However, you may also want to compute the index yourself. If I remember correctly, this was an exercise you uh, may or may not have done yesterday. So now we're going to do this together in the kernel. We're not going to use the Alpaca API to get the global thread index or the grid thread index, but we're going to compute this ourselves using a combination of some other functions here. So first we're going to get back to the source code. This one. So we already uh, have the grid block index and the block thread index. So uh, uh, the only thing that's missing is the block extent here. So we're going to do this uh, this way. Uh, what did I call it in the slide? Block thread extent. Let's get worked if block threads. And with this, we can now compute the grid thread index. As we now can do the multiplication of blood thread. Uh, grid block index, meaning the index of the block on the grid, times the block thread extent, plus the local thread index in the block. And this should now give us the global index, or the, the grid thread index, be unique again for every thread. Uh, uh, this should be in lowercase. executors, we have unique threads, uh, unique thread indices again. Okay. This is basically what I've just done. I've shown you the computation of uh, the grid thread index. If you want to use uh, if you don't want to do, uh, do this by the API, or if you want to use an offset or something, you can calculate it using a combination of the other API functions. To sum this up, if you need an index, you can uh, use the uh, get index functions from Alpaca. If you need the extent of the grid or the block, you can use the get work diff functions. But uh, if you want, you can also calculate the indices yourself. For example, if you need to add an offset or if you need a different um, index, uh, indexing approach than what Alpaca can give you. That's it for part one. Um, are there any questions to what we just have seen here? Hey, yeah, I just had a small question. So I noticed that um, you're always taking the zeroth element of what you get back from these functions. Mm -hmm. Is there more information there or is it a reason that it's the zeroth element? Uh, yeah, we'll get to that in the next part actually. Oh, okay, fine. I defer my question then.